Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Coffee time. It's interesting. Instagram gets the message out faster. I start Facebook before I start Instagram, and it still does it that way. Okay. Oh, come on. Go away. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the middle of the week. <laughs> it's hump day. It's that climb up today and then dropping off tomorrow. Uh, so, so incredibly busy. I don't know which thing to do first anymore. It's a little bit nutty. Um, so today I wanted to talk about reading lab results because yesterday I was talking about the... Um, <laughs> the bad information given by a veterinarian based on uh, crystals or oh hi queen crystals or stones that were seen um, or alluded to on a urinalysis and the information that was given to the pet owner was completely wrong. Um, so one of the things that we talk about particularly in supporters is how to read lab work and um, having that knowledge base so that when one of the things we recommend is anytime you have lab work drawn or you have x-rays taken, get copies. Get copies of everything. They can email you copies of radiographs. They can email you copies of lab work. Um, you need to get all that and either keep it in a digital file or in a notebook um, with printouts, something so that you always have access to your pet's information. So that if you have to change veterinarians, if you have to go to an emergency service, whatever, you have all that information to take with you so that you're not paying to get things done again that you've already had done. Um, because if you can't rattle off what every single number was uh, and when the last lab results were done, believe me, they're gonna repeat them. Um, and there are some veterinary hospitals that don't even trust what someone else has done, so they'll wanna repeat it on their own anyway. Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I don't trust all of them either, but um, so, but then the other thing is you've got this copy of this lab report and your veterinarian or the technician, somebody from the hospital calls you and says, okay, we just went through your pet's lab work and uh, yeah, we've got some mildly elevated liver enzymes. We're not worried about it. Don't worry. Uh, you know, we'll just recheck it in a few months. And you go, okay, should I be a little more proactive about that? How bad were the levels? And that, you know, oh, don't worry. Okay, well now you get a copy of the lab work and you go, okay, well, there's five liver values on here. Three are abnormal. One of them's really abnormal. And, oh yeah, what about the platelets are out of range and the white blood cell count's out of range and the urinalysis has a bunch of stuff out of range. They didn't mention any of that. Should I be concerned? Yeah, you should. So um, you have a couple of choices. You can call them back up and say, hey, you know, you said there were these three things wrong, but what about these other six? They're out of range. How far out of range are they? How worried should I be? What does, let's put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Let's not just, you know, glom onto, yep, there's one thing wrong. Um, and the, the reason why I recommend that you do this is because so many consultations that I have done, when I get the, the reports from their vet records in my inbox to ev evaluate for a consultation, I look at them and I go, oh man, like 
they're calling me and the most one of the most notable was one where i was doing a consultation for an animal with excess protein in the urine and they had been chasing down this excess protein in the dog's urine for three years they did urinalysis after urinalysis after urinalysis kidney function test kidney function test kidney function test um, and just kept chasing that particular value when i looked through the lab results i said Okay, normal platelets are around 300 to 400,000. This dog's platelets are over a million. No mention of it anywhere in the lab work. I went back through the lab work for the past three years. Those platelets had been at those levels for three years. The dog had bone marrow cancer. Nobody caught it. No, in three years, they were so laser focused on protein in the urine that they totally ignored an abnormal number that was way abnormal. So of course I broke this to the poor owner and uh, she burst into tears and I felt like kind of a schmo for, oops, sorry, I thought you knew, didn't mean to just dump that in your lap in the first two minutes of our consultation. So, um, and I've had so many like that um, where people will, will will say to me, well, they called me and they said his liver enzymes are out of whack. They didn't say how out of whack. So they told me to come back in three months and repeat it. I'm repeating it, it's higher. And they're saying, well, just keep giving them the, you know, the milk thistle. No other explanations, no looking at what else is going on on the lab work. So it's critical that you guys have to take charge. Veterinarians and their staff are overwhelmingly busy right now. There is a huge, there's about a 30% shortage of veterinarians right now, at least in the US. I don't know about the rest of the world, but right now we are in a huge shortage. And there's a lot of reasons for that. That's another whole conversation, but they're very short staffed. They're very rushed. And so a lot of times when they're like in, in my old clinic, we would generally every morning have at least 30 sets of lab work that we had to go through. And we had to get that done before we started our office hours and our surgery and admissions and everything else that was being done for the day. So it could become very easy to kind of skim over it. You glance at it, you see the things that are highlighted and you go, okay, great. All right, let me write it up for, you know, let's get some elevated liver enzymes. It can be really easy to overlook something that's, you know, kind of at the end of the list or just, you know, off to the side, you didn't notice it. Um, it's really, it happens. <laughs> a lot and it's not all done with malice guys this is this is not a malicious thing a lot of times it's just that it's overlooked so important that you have that information in front of you now you may or may not get them to give you a call back i've had people that i've done consultations they've been waiting three work th three weeks to get their lab work results back and haven't gotten them i can tell you your veterinarian has those results in a day so if you have to wait three weeks to get your results i know we have to do that in the human field kind of stinks um Although where we are here with Wake Med, it shows up in my online chart the next day. I have a copy of my lab results and I can read them. It's awesome. Doesn't happen much in human medicine. So you've got a copy of your lab work and it's got all these, I don't have a copy in front of me, but it's got all these initials down the side. It's got RBC, WBC, MCH, MCHC, MCV, uh, Luke, Mono, EO, and you're sitting there going, okay, that's great. I've got all these numbers. I have no idea what they are. I have no idea what they mean. That's what our lab course is for. That's where this is going. We're talking about our lab course. So we, we put together two lab courses. We put together, um, and these have taken me months to get these done for you guys. Um, but I think it's critical that you have, that you're armed with knowledge. So the simplified lab course, and I put a link, it's in Dr. Judy Yu. The simplified lab course basically defines all those little abbreviations down that side of the page, the GLU, the BUN, the, uh, the, the CREA, the, you know, whatever is listed there. I think that's one. Um, whatever is listed there, it gives you the definitions of those. It also has videos on how to collect a urine sample, um, how the blood is drawn, how to prepare your animal if you're going in to have lab work done, whether they should be fasted or not fasted, whether they can have water or not have water. So it makes sure that when you're spending your money to get lab work done, you have your animal well prepped and you, you know what you need to do to get the best results that you can. Um, so that's what the simplified course is about. The, um, uh, lab results and interpretation course is the bigger course. 
That one's going to take you quite a few hours to go through. But it talks about each one of those abbreviations, what their definition is, and what it means if it's high or low, and how to, uh, you know, put the puzzle pieces together. Because, like I said, with this one with the urine protein, they got so hyper-focused on that, they ignored everything else on the lab work. And if they had put all the puzzle pieces together, they would have come up with the diagnosis and would have been treating the animal for the correct thing. So, um, so that's for if you want to have a greater understanding and you want to be able to do that puzzle yourself so that when you call the veterinarian back and you go, well, okay, you didn't mention the fact that his HCT was too low. Well, now I know that that means my pet is anemic. What are we going to do about that? You know, where's that coming from? How bad is that? Do, should we be doing something? If I put that together with his urine being very dilute, what does the two of those together mean? Um, so that's, this is for the kind of a, 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 if you're the type that likes to kind of geek out and really get to the nitty gritty of why things are happening and how to, how to question and dive further in uh, to figure out how to put all the puzzle pieces together, that's what that one is for. So not everybody needs that one, but um, if, you, if you want to be able to put things together, that's what that one is. Now, we are adding a third piece of the lab puzzle. Thank you, Gwen, very much. Um, the third piece of the lab puzzle, uh, which will be available sometime in the next week or so, is a monthly subscription if you want to be able to send in lab results from your pets and have me interpret them and talk about them. And basically, uh, you would be able to send in lab results, and I would um, interpret them and then go on a, um, a video and talk about them and explain them. So if you're in that subscription, not only would you get to hear the interpretation of your pet's lab work, you'd also get to hear the interpretation of other people's lab works and see what they look like. And it's just building your knowledge base so that, you know, yeah, maybe all you're interested in is your own pet, but maybe you're one of those people who really wants to understand this. Uh, for those who are in the veterinary profession, veterinary technicians, veterinarians, we are working very hard at getting race approved so that you can get CE credits for this. Um, so we won't, we won't have that um, information, whether we get approved or not, for at least a couple of months. Uh, but that would be the hope, so that by the end of the year, if we get that approved, you'd be able to use that for licensing. So, um, so they are live, they are available now. It's in Dr. Judy U. I put a link, uh, Instagram will have to post it on Facebook. I did put it in the description. Um, so hopefully, uh, this will be helpful. The, the supporters kind of know what we're talking about because I did a couple of sessions for them where they submitted lab work and we, I think we had two sessions where I just went through everybody's lab work and explained kind of what was going on. Um, and, you know, it's just a great way to learn and to um, build your knowledge base and to kind of hold everybody accountable with your pet so that you can call your veterinarian and go, okay, well, that's great. You know, thanks for talking about those two things that are wrong. However, <laughs> we got these four. Um, and what you might want to consider when you have lab work run, ask them to email or take a picture and send it to you, whatever, your lab work before you have the conversation with them on the phone because that will give you a chance to have it in front of you, to be looking at it, and to have your questions formulated and also to make sure that they cover everything on there that's not in the normal range. So not a bad idea when you go in and get lab work drawn to say, hey, as soon as you get that, forward me a copy of it because when you call me with the results, I wanna have that in front of me so that I can really see what you're talking about. Just tell them, look, I'm a visual learner. I have to have it in front of me. I can't just hear you talk about it. Um, and that could be very helpful for you as well. So everybody have a wonderful day. Um, tomorrow, we're going to do our Facebook Live 
here in the warehouse, and I'm going to talk about some of the new products that Gwen has gotten in that we, you don't even know that we have because we haven't uh, had a chance to show you. Uh, I do have a dentist appointment in the morning, so I don't know what time I'll be back here. Um, but sometime mid-morning, I hope, we'll be uh, in the warehouse and uh, show you some of the new things that we have, talk about what they're for and uh, why we thought they were important. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Hope the rest of my day goes a little smoother. <laughs> Walked out of the house with stuff I needed, you know, without stuff I needed, and you know, got up too late, had insomnia. <laughs> Puppy bit me, he was chasing me to play, and he actually bit me. <laughs> Stinker. He didn't get to come to work today, I'm mad at him. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.